A lot of Vitlinda's audience seem to be quite young and seemingly susceptible to mental health hindrances based on a lot of her comments and what people have told me, which is very unfortunate. Is pushing better help to them going to help them or is pushing better help to them potentially going to harm them? Once again, we're back in front of the computer, in front of the camera. I'm going to talk about some things on the interwebs that are going to be slightly different today. Not so much training related, a bit more mental health related. And funnily enough, the video we're actually talking about is a video recently posted by Linda's son. I dropped out at 21, sold all my clothes and bought a one-way plane ticket to Thailand. This video very much kind of talks about Linda's kind of mental health journey, especially as of recently, through this whole YouTube career and how things have been impacted now, such as burnout and things along those lines. So for just an advanced warning, I I will throw in a quick trigger warning here to express that I am going to be talking about some potentially sensitive subjects very much surrounding the realm of mental health. So if that is something you do not want to listen to or something you don't feel like you aren't maybe ready to listen to right now or listening to it could potentially hinder you instead of help you, then please do not engage in this content. Please do not consume this content. At the end of the day, I do really appreciate the fact that you have clicked on this video to support me, but the priority should always be you, your mental health and your healing. Supporting me is not worth sacrificing that for, although I do very much appreciate the sentiment of you even just being here. So so I'm not actually going to speak too much about Linda today because it's something I actually want to kind of go into a bigger topic which has been triggered by this conversation with Linda, but we're going to get there very soon. Before we obviously crack on the video, I've got to throw it in there. If you like this video at any point in the video, please let me know you like the video by liking the video. Perhaps even drop a comment to let me know that you don't think my forehead is as big as I think it is. And maybe even consider subscribing to the channel and potentially even clicking the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. I never thought that people would ever want to listen to what I had to say. And it was really beautiful. It was very addicting. The creative process, the connection, the attention, growth, the money, the algorithm. Yeah, I actually kind of fully get that. I think ultimately when TFNL was first established, the growth was very slow. Fast forward to a couple of years ago, the growth picked up substantially. Obviously since then has slowed for myself and seemingly a lot of other creators. But that growth period where things are really like progressive is really addicting and it's really exciting because for once I felt like I could pursue something that I really wanted to pursue outside of a typical office job of nine to five, which I, I never felt like I was suited to. Then I was given the opportunity to essentially pursue TFNL full time, which obviously I'm still working on. And that was just fantastic. But that was largely stemmed by YouTube. A lot of my, my self-worth and my anxiety actually stemmed from YouTube analytics and YouTube performance. When a video performed well, I felt like I'd done something worthwhile and something that people recognized and something people appreciated and I helped people. When YouTube videos didn't perform particularly well, I felt like I was failing, I was inadequate and I was inferior. So I, I do get that. It's, it's tough, I understand. It sounds like you're burnt out. Are you resistant to accepting that? Tell myself to rest. I just can't. I feel so guilty. I didn't notice at first. I think the signs are pretty subtle. For example, every little thing would put me over the edge. Stress eating, weight gain, inappropriate screaming and crying. I can't do it anymore. Again, like I said, this video is not largely going to be surrounding Linda because I mean, I'm never here to bash on anyone. I'm especially not here to bash on someone who's expressing their mental health struggles and showing vulnerability online. Regardless of whether you like or dislike Linda, obviously you know my opinions about her content previously. I really appreciate the fact that somebody is expressing these feelings online, hopefully reducing the stigma surrounding mental health. I think ultimately, I always kind of said I wanted to be an individual on this on this platform especially a man on this platform who not only had what I like to deem to be a good knowledge of fitness, but also a good knowledge and understanding of mental health and empathy surrounding that. I think although I'm using Linda as a catalyst for this conversation, I don't want her to be the priority because again, I'm not here to milk her mental health. I'm not here to capitalize on her mental health. I'm merely here to see this as an opportunity to, to actually express similarities in myself and Linda. Also talk about something where I think creators need to take a bit more responsibility, which I'll get to shortly. So Linda's just spoken about how she's obviously burnt out. She felt guilty for not uploading consistently she felt guilty for so many things that had led to essentially quick reactions emotional breakdowns and things like that i feel like if i can't be honest with you on my channel then why am i even here and i always pride myself on being honest even if it's potentially too much information so for two years i didn't miss a single upload but i would stay up all night to edit videos i would cancel plans to edit videos i would do anything i could to make sure i got that upload sorted because if i failed i felt like i had failed and one of my massive insecurities is failure and i think personally that kind of stems from the fact that school not due to lack of ability or lack of intelligence i like to think I didn't do particularly well. I, I failed most of my subjects at school because I just 
couldn't be bothered. I didn't really take it seriously. And I was, I was too young and immature to really understand the importance of education. Fast forward a few years, I then went to university and obviously got myself a, an undergrad degree, so a bachelor's, as well as a master's, almost as like I need to like prove myself. But what Linda said here about burnout and guilt is something that I think a lot of people really overlook, especially in the realm of like being self-employed. And part of YouTube is being self-employed. She's allowed herself by no fault of her own to allow this kind of journey and this pressure of worth, being money, being views, whatever it may be, to consume her and essentially take away from her mental health because she felt guilty if she wasn't doing enough from a business or success perspective to accelerate her success when in accelerating that success, she's actually regressed from, from a health perspective, like I said, mentally. I want to touch on that because that's something I actually really associate to. Like I said, I obviously have not missed or had not missed a single upload for two years. Fast forward to about three weeks ago now, I hit a, a very serious mental decline. This has been a decline that's actually probably been occurring since December, in all honesty, actually arguably since last year, but it really started declining since December. For those of you who don't know, it very much seems like I, um, I've had an assessment Although an appointment with a psychiatrist is scheduled for the end of this month, I've had an assessment and it very much seems like I have pretty severe BPD, so borderline personality disorder, which is something that was actually kind of presented to me when I was 23 by a psychiatrist and said, Harry, I think you have BPD. And they never explored it further. They never treated me for it. They never did any of that. Instead, they put me on a shed load of medications that really negatively impacted my life and really hindered my life for a few years, as I've spoken about in previous mental health videos. Again, BPD is very heavily stigmatized and very heavily misunderstood. In all honesty, I don't understand it myself very well but I'm learning to I'm trying to again this is where the trigger warning comes in because at the end of the day, this is my channel. I can share what I see fit. And the only reason I'm sharing this is not for sympathy. I do not want sympathy. I do not want attention. I'm simply sharing this as a means of, you know what? You can speak about the things that are troubling you if you so wish. And if you are struggling with anything, please understand that you are not alone and that somebody else is here to talk to you and here to listen and here to share their journey that, although I hope you don't associate to or don't relate to, some of you might. Like I said, fast forward to probably about three weeks ago, from when you're watching this video, it would have been just so nearly four weeks ago now. Like I said, the decline hit really hard. I'm not going to go in all the details because in all honesty um, I feel very ashamed and I feel very guilty I will express that at some point in the future I'm just not ready to right now because I feel like I've let a lot of people down I feel like I've also let you down Sunday just over three weeks ago now from this video if it comes out on Monday I like I said Sunday morning I declined very rapidly this has been declining for like I said a long time I was having an episode of mania which is essentially quite attributed to BPD the way I kind of associated to it is there's almost like two versions of Harry there's me the person I am as an individual and the person I believe I truly am as, as, as me which is somebody who I like to think is kind, caring, and very empathetic. And there's obviously the personality, which the way I kind of word it, will do anything in its power to make sure Harry uh, essentially acts on his intrusive thoughts and ends his own life. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. It pushed me into a place I never wanted to go to and somewhere I regret ever going to mentally. And that led to me getting 13 stitches in my wrist. Again, I'm not saying it was an attempt of any sorts because I don't believe it was. Genuinely, I don't believe it was. I think it was a, uh, the side of me that I'm in therapy and trying to heal from and trying to recover from and go into remission from being the BPD that was very much consuming me and telling me to go down a route I wasn't ready to go down or didn't want to go down at all because ultimately I do not want to die, I want to be alive. So like I said, I ended up getting 13 stitches in my wrist, the ambulance was called, the paramedics came, they sorted me out, and I was then taken away and essentially grilled and assessed for section, so to get put into living psychiatric care, which they then, potentially due to my charismatic nature, how I present myself, whatever it may be, um, decided that it wasn't necessary. Spoke to my therapist as well. She agreed. She goes, Harry, you don't need to be isolated. You're not a danger to yourself or to other people. You just need to be supported. I think ultimately that's obviously where I've been for that time. Again, there's a lot more information surrounding this, like a lot more, far more than I'll probably ever share on here because again, I don't think I'll ever be ready, but it's an expression of, you know, mental health is actually very much a thing. Mental health, although very stigmatized, doesn't change the fact that a lot of people are suffering, especially in, when it comes to men's mental health, is so commonly overlooked and I, I feel no shame in expressing the fact that I suffer from some some problems. I suffer from episodes of depression, pretty severe anxiety at times, um, obviously with BPD and potentially other things as well, like they've obviously uh, uh, thought about dissociative disorder and things like that. Although uh, there's a lot of guilt and shame surrounding that, I think I can attribute that to a few reasons of, was it burnout that pushed it? And there was a lot of things. My self-care was not very good as you kind of saw from previous videos. I looked very tired in a lot of them because I wasn't sleeping much, nowhere near as much as I should be. I wasn't taking care of myself how I should be. I wasn't giving my 
myself time off. I wasn't doing these things. I was my head work schedule was very manic and stressful. Although it could have been avoided, I'm glad that it wasn't because I think in going to that period where uh, I'm not exaggerating, it was genuinely the worst day of my life, and I've had some pretty bad days. And that week afterwards was genuinely the worst week of my life, where throughout the entire week I didn't think I was going to make it to the end of it because I was adamant I was going to do something which now looking back I would have regretted. I made it to the end of it, kind of thought to myself, I have two options here: essentially lay down and die, or I do something about it, allow myself to get better, do better, and be better. And that's where we are today. So although that was the worst period of my life, it's given me a lot of time to reflect on what I need and what I was lacking in my life that may have contributed to that episode of mania that led to me acting on those intrusive thoughts, which I deeply regret. I've gone from the worst period of my life to arguably one of the best periods of my life because I feel better now. I'm very anxious about TFNL. That's probably my big anxiety and stress, and I'm always going to be honest with you about that. Obviously, YouTube growth has slowed quite a lot recently, as a lot of people have experienced. I'm worried about the business side of things, my future with the TFNL, because obviously TFNL is essentially my dream to create a, a business and a platform to essentially thrive off helping people and give you other people opportunities I care about, like Ryder, for example, is a TFNL coach. He's a great friend of mine. I care about him a lot. He's extremely knowledgeable. I want to be able to provide him with an opportunity I feel like he deserves and an opportunity I hope that I can provide him with one day, as well as other people. But beyond that, life is a lot better. Genuinely, I feel like I needed hit rock bottom to realize that something needed to change and I feel like I'm making those changes. And it seems like Linda, again, I may be wrong here, it's kind of got to a similar point to the point where she's kind of hit that burnout phase, potentially hitting rock bottom and realizing that something needs to change and that she shouldn't feel guilty for changing those things. She should never feel guilty for prioritizing herself and taking care of her mental health. The thing with Linda is a lot of the videos are very much repetition. She repeats what she says in a lot of cases. I, I rarely see a lot of change occurring, but I truly hope, because again, I don't know Linda personally, but if you're a human, I care about you enough to hope you never suffer. And I truly hope that Linda does have this opportunity to realize that something does need to change, that she needs to better prioritize her mental health. And she also needs to better prioritize just her healing journey in general. And sometimes taking time off is, is what's needed. Although we, we hope that's not the case. Sometimes it is, unfortunately. And you should never feel guilty for doing so. You should never feel guilty for prioritizing your own healing because those who really care about you and those who support you will probably support you in that too. So again, I truly hope Linda has the opportunity to do this. And I really hope this isn't another video where she's going to repeat herself for many videos to come and she does make that change necessary. Because at the end of the day, whether I like Linda or dislike Linda, whether I know Linda or don't know Linda, I still want to see her do well. I still want to see her healthy and happy. I still want to see her thriving. And although I don't always agree with the content she's promoting, but I still think she has benefited a lot of people's lives. As many of you have told me who watch Linda that she's really helped you. Then why would I ever want to not hope somebody that has helped the lives of others does well? Again, I wish her content would change for my own personal reasons, but that's, that's, my, that's my opinion. And my opinion probably doesn't align with yours. This video, as all my videos are, are very much based on my opinion. And the individuals I'm talking about are very much used for context or a catalyst for conversation. But that kind of comes on to the primary point of the video, which I want to go to, is this part. And I also wanted to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. If you keep watching, you're going to see how huge of an impact therapy has made on my life over these past couple of months. So BetterHelp. A few years ago, I believe it was four years ago, PewDiePie did a video talking about BetterHelp. And and essentially, again, this video is based merely on opinion, not based on fact whatsoever. He really went after them and said that they were doing a lot more harm than good. He said a lot of the therapists on that site weren't necessarily qualified therapists. They essentially mass produced therapy as a means of substituting for therapy, where it wasn't actually a substitute for therapy. He called it a luxury add on on top of therapy. A lot of the reviews were negative, although there were obviously some positive ones as well. And a lot, a lot of what was being offered was inconsistent. People were having to pay a lot of money because he had to pay the month up front. So many things. Again, this was four years ago. I don't know how that's changed now. I'm basing it purely based on what was happening then. It's not just PewDiePie. A lot of people have spoken negatively about BetterHelp and that kind of comes into the topic of influencers taking responsibility for who they work with. I fully appreciate and fully respect anybody who's trying to help anybody else and anybody who's trying to push therapy or promote therapy onto other people because I genuinely believe probably everyone could benefit from therapy to some extent. I'm in therapy now. I have been in therapy on and off since I was six years old, so over 20 years ago, and I will likely be in therapy for the rest of my life because I refuse to let things like BPD hinder me from living a happy and healthy life. And I'm also starting DBT, which is a group therapy at a psychiatric hospital, hopefully in July, which will run for six months. And then on top of that, obviously do individual therapy as well. And afterwards, individual therapy too. It is very expensive, which is obviously a hindrance, but then they, what better thing to invest in than yourself, your mental health, and just your, your health in general. When you promote companies like Better Health that again, apparently, or seemingly, allegedly, we'll say, aren't necessarily benefiting people or are potentially actually, in fact, hindering people and essentially mass producing mental health support that doesn't or shouldn't be mass produced, then you've got the question, are you doing more harm 
to your audience are you helping your audience do you really care about your audience or do you care more about the paycheck that comes with the sponsorship pewdiepie alluded to four years ago this was that each referral resulted in 200 dollars to the individuals that were referring them if you got a thousand referrals that's two hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money an exceptional amount of money again i don't know how accurate that information is now so please don't hold that to me whenever i get approached by a brand i, I kind of have a checklist of things i need to go through is there any controversy surrounding them that's something to consider could they help people or harm people could anyone on watching my video benefit from them and potentially would I benefit from them as well so I've worked with like Manscaped Ridge Wallet things like that brands that I would use myself and I still use to myself to this day I've also got some other brand deals lined up in the future that my mum and sister would really benefit from I think a lot of you guys would benefit from too but if it doesn't tick those boxes I'm going to question whether it's worth working with them because I'm never here to harm my audience if I'm going to promote something it's going to be something that can provide some benefit to somebody watching this and I, I don't I question based on what I've heard whether better help could provide that benefit I'm really unsure and I think there's a mass responsibility of influencers need to do a lot more research surrounding who they're working with and need to do a lot more research surrounding is there any controversy linked to who they're working with and are they really helping their audience or are they potentially harming their audience a lot of it Linda's audience seem to be quite young and seemingly susceptible to mental health hindrances based on a lot of her comments and what people have told me which is very unfortunate is pushing better help to them going to help them or is pushing better help to them potentially going to harm them even if it harms one person it's not worth it to me it genuinely is not influencers content creators whoever you are we need to do better it's not just you or them this is me as well we need to do better and we need to gauge whether what we're doing is actually going to help our audience or is it going to harm our audience because without an audience who are we and without care for our audience again who are we but again that's just my opinion you may not agree with my opinion you in fact may disagree with my opinion and that's absolutely fine i just encourage you to let me know in the comment section so we can engage in this conversation i can understand your opinion too to help me learn and grow as a person i'm gonna throw it in there very quickly as i have to obviously i've got to plug the bits and bobs surrounding tfnl not only is a tfnl coaching application form linked below where you can either work with myself or rider on a one-to-one -one basis the tfnl group coaching is also linked below in the description as well where you can do the, the the group coaching aspect of TFNL, where I write a program for everybody, which you can follow through the Train Heroic app or website, work together as a team or individually if you so wish, talk to me, communicate with me, and it's also cheaper than your Netflix subscription. Or if none of those appeal to you, you can always look at the TFNL workout guides linked down below. So you've got the growth guide and the home workout handbook, where there is ample amounts of fitness information and knowledge to help you achieve your goals, in addition to 30 weeks or more of programming in each of those guides. Bloody splendid if you ask me. I won't throw in a common question of the week today because this video has been a lot longer than expected. Expected. Just know that if anybody watching this video is suffering to any degree, please don't hesitate to reach out. Not necessarily just to myself, although my DMs are always open. You can please reach out to professionals online. You can reach out to the TFNL community, the TFNL Discord, where there is a need to talk section for mental health specifically. There are so many avenues and we will always do what we can to help you as best as we can. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my seemingly endless waffle about something you probably weren't expecting to tolerate today. And thank you for tolerating the video.